Hi, my name is Neve McLean and in our group we have Carla Wainwright and Georgia Champion and today we will be modelling Fisher's Principle. The pr our Fisher's Principle is an evolutionary model that explains why the sex ratio of most species that produce offspring through sexual reproduction is approximately one to one between males and females. The principle comes from the basis that there will be two copies of each chromosome in each organism, one from each sex, the male and the female. It is also assumed that mating is random within the population and as such, any organism has the chance to reproduce with an or another organism. In a population where there were a greater number of males, they would only find one female to mate with. This would mean that the genetic contribution of the female's fitness would be higher than the male's because it will allow for an increase in female offspring, bringing the population back to equilibrium. Therefore, the only time in which the fitness of both sexes will be equal is when an equal, um, equal number of male and female offsprings are produced. The taken-for-granted assumption that the number of men and women in the world is roughly equal can be explained through mathematical modelling. Fisher's principle has allowed advances on the sex ratio to provide both quantitative evidence for the relative importance of natural selection at the gene, individual, kin and population levels, as well as addressing, addressing questions about the precision of adaptation and the limits on natural selection. This mechanism of natural selection predicts the evolution towards the one-to-one -to -one proportion irrespective of the sex determining system. Hi, I'm Georgia and I will be demonstrating how we convert our real world problem into a mathematical solution. We first carry through our original assumption that mating within the population is random. And with this we know that each female can expect to have n number of children, that the proportion of these children are male can be denoted as x, and that each female will have xn sons and one take xn daughters. Then we need a model to represent the fitness of each organism. One variant female and a certain number, which is 2p in this case, herd females. Therefore the equation for fitness of each of our organisms will be expected number of daughters times expected number of offspring per daughter plus the expected number of sons times the expected number of offspring per sons. My name is Carla and I'll be going through the mathematical solution of Fisher's principle. So from the slide previously, um, we got um, this as the equation for fitness of any organism. Using the conversion table and substituting in the known values, it is now evident that the only unknown is the expected offspring per son. This can be calculated by doing expected number of variance daughters times total number of herd daughters divided by expected number of variant sons times total number of herd sons times by n. Once again, substituting in from the conversion table, this is what we get. It is now clear that what we do not know is the total number of herd daughters or herd sons. To calculate the herd values, all we're going to do is multiply the variance offspring by 2p and using x as a half. So for the total herd daughters, we're going to do the expected variance daughters times by 2p and that will give us np. And the same process for a herd son, so expected variant sons times 2p and that will also give us np. Um, so substituting back into that original equation we had before, now we know that the total herd daughters and total herd sons we get this as the expected offspring per son. As we now have the equation for the expected offspring per son, we can now substitute into the variant organism's fitness equation. So substituting it in right here, if we expand and simplify, we will get this equation here as the variant organism's fitness. We will also need an equation that will represent the herd organism's fitness, which we will represent as gx. This is constructed in the same process, but the number of daughters and sons is substituted in as a half. So this equation here, gx, is now the new equation for herd organism's fitness. These are the functions for the fitness of a variant organism and the fitness of a herd organism. It is evident that both are proportional to n squared, and therefore if we cancel the n squared values from both functions, these are the new fx and gx functions that we will get. If Fisher's principle is correct, then the fitness of a variant organism can never be greater than the fitness of a herd organism. To test this, we must find the difference between the two functions i.e. the difference between the herd organism and the variant organism functions, which we will call hx. Therefore, hx equals 4x squared, take away 4x plus 1 over 2x plus 2p. Continuing on from Carla, I'll be summarising the mathematical solution. So, the equation from the previous slide, the hx equation, it is evident that the denominator is always greater than 0, as both x and p have to be greater than 0. This demonstrates a fraction is determined by using only the numerator, and this can be simplified as 2x take 1 all squared. Thus, there is a mathematical evidence to suggest that there will always be an equal number of male and female offspring in any organism, because hx is always positive when x equals half and when hx is equal to zero, and this demonstrates that gx is always greater than fx. 
Altogether, the one-to-one -one sex ratio is unbeatable by any alternative. So now I'll explain why the mathematical solution answers a real-world problem. So the mathematical proof has determined that the one-on-one -on -one sex ratio is the only ratio that will allow for population growth, with the fitness of males and females being relatively equal. Using GeoGebra, the function here uh, represents hx, demonstrates a proof that hx is always positive, except for when x equals half and when it is equal to zero. As hx equals gx take fx, it is evident that gx is always greater than fx, except when the variant adopts the same one-on-one male-to-female sex ratio as the herd, which will then make gx equal to fx.